In this video we're going to look at conductors and insulators. We're going to define conductors and insulators as well as look at some of the things that can happen with heat radiation. A thermal conductor is any material that conducts heat well. Generally metals are good conductors of heat and this is because of the metallic bonds that hold metals together uh, having free electrons that are able to move around. This is the same reason that metals are generally good conductors of electricity. So if we have a good conductor, thermal conductor, we can create pretty much anything where we want the heat to move around. So for example, we make our fry pans and saucepans out of good conductors because we want to conduct the heat into whatever it is we're cooking. We can also create heat sinks. Now, a heat sink is something that is used in a few instances, but one is in computers. The CPU of a computer generates a lot of heat, and that heat can damage the chipboard. So what we do is have a good conductor sit uh, right on top of the CPU, and that conductor conducts the heat away from this chipboard. So it conducts it, and it has these fins, and it'll have air that's blown over those fins to try and get the heat out as quickly as it can so it doesn't cause any damage. A thermal insulator, on the other hand, is a material that does not conduct heat very well. And generally, gases aren't very good conductors of heat. And the reason for this is because of the gaps between the particles in a gas, because they're not touching each other, they're floating around it's hard for them to pass their heat energy onto the next particle. Uh, and we know that convection happens in gases, and that's the main heating rather than conduction. So what, how many insulators work is by having multiple cells of air, and these stops the convection from occurring. So it means that the, the particles aren't free to move around, so it's only the conduction which doesn't work very well. And this is how insulation works in your home. You have a particle that creates a map, a mat and uh, traps a whole heap of air inside it, as well as the down, so the feathers that are in some good coats. So they're an insulator because there's a whole heap of air that's trapped between the filaments of feathers and it's not moving around causing that convection. Another example of an insulator is in a thermos flask. Now what a thermos flask does is it has a double wall. So it has an inside wall that's in contact with the liquid that you're trying to keep hot or cold. Then it'll have a vacuum layer between the two walls. Now this vacuum layer is taking it a next step further from the gas. So gases are poor conductors or good insulators. The vacuum doesn't conduct heat at all because there's no particles in it to pass the heat on in, the, in contact. Uh, so then on outside that you have another layer which is the one that is uh, open to the elements outside. So this vacuum stops heat from transferring from the inside wall to the outside wall. I mentioned in the previous video that heat radiation is a form of electromagnetic radiation in the infrared spectrum. Another form of electromagnetic radiation is light energy, uh, visible light that is. Uh, so when we think about, when you're trying to visualize these, if you think about light, it works in a very similar way. So the heat or the energy from the radiation can either be absorbed by the material reflected by the material, meaning that it bounces off, or transmitted, meaning that it comes through. So if you think of this, uh, absorbed would be something like a dark color. So if you're in a dark colored car, it absorbs the heat radiation and gets hot. While if you're in a light, shiny car, the heat gets reflected, so the car doesn't get as hot. Uh, or if you're standing inside a window and the sun shining on you from outside the window, that heat radiation is being transmitted through the window and you can feel it on your skin. So there's three ways in which heat radiation 
can interact with an object. It can either be absorbed, heating up the object, reflected, or transmitted. Generally, reflected and transmitted doesn't result in the object heating up too much. In this video, we've looked at conductors and defined conductors uh, as something that con conducts heat well. We've defined insulators as something that doesn't conduct heat very well. And we've looked at the three ways in which heat radiation can interact with an object being transmission, reflection, and absorption.